Beyond the veil of our own perception, upon some ethereal plane few of us can comprehend, the Mushi play. Though ghost-like in appearance, these strange critters are neither spirits nor demons, separate even to the Japanese catch-all that is yokai. Mushi are simply life at its most basic, its most pure, closer to Mother Earth than humans, animals, and even the lush flora that sprouts from her verdant womb. These creatures, this twisting canopy of light that is formed from a thousand different iterations of Mushi, and a thousand more besides, a part of a vein of spiritual energy that flows beneath our feet, a plane that runs parallel to our own. Occasionally, these planes intersect, often in harmful ways, and it is the job of the Mushishi to heal these wounds, to ensure the harmony of our coexistence. Our ever-wandering lead, Ginko, is one such peddler, a patient and tireless voyeur of those softly warring worlds, eager not only to heal, but also to educate those who aren't able to pass the otherworldly themselves. In healing those he comes in contact with, of insisting not on the destruction of Mushi like many of his peers, but instead on the merits of a delicate balance, the softly spoken Ginko begins to heal us as well. The show's ethereal roots take hold quickly, nurturing something inside all of us that our media so rarely tends to. A piece that is getting harder and harder to obtain in not only the entertainment we consume, but indeed the very world we live in. And as you continue to travel with Ginko, the wonderful state of Zen begins beckoning you back, night after night, in response to the noise and drama of everyday life, luring you to a fantastical world not so different from our own, where its wild trappings begin to make perfect sense. Quiet, contemplative, calm and haunting, Mushishi is an anime quite unlike any other. First serialised as a manga at the turn of the millennium, Mushishi began life as a book of folklore for a land that never really existed. Set in a version of Japan lost in time, whose rolling hills, endless mountain ranges and isolated townships clash with the more modern elements of its imaginings, where some of its fantasy, like local animal deities protecting their own pocket of nature, are widely accepted, whilst others like the existence of a strange plague of bug-like mischief-makers, are often balked at. Created by Yuki Urashibara, this world and the lone wanderer who conquers it, one village, one problem, one mushi at a time, immediately catches in your imagination. Within its first volume of calm exorcisms and travelling swamps, it sells itself as something wonderfully unique. Mushishi dabbles in the wholesome horror of its stories, almost misrepresenting itself as something entirely darker than it is at first blush. Like many fairy tales, there's a hardness to the lessons at the heart of each bittersweet story, carefully towing that fine line between scaring its viewers and using that fear to guide them to a beautiful centerpiece. Mushishi is full of those centerpieces, tales of loss and hope, of the follies of man versus the cruelty of nature, Stories of how best to live the lives given to us, and the sadness sure to follow when we inevitably fail to listen. Of the moments of calm before, or after, or even during the many storms that make up our lives. Mushishi could have easily been perceived as sad, an anthology full of tales of tragedy. Whether due to unfortunate happenstance, or the hubris of the humans that people its many, many stories, they rarely end with a smile. The folklore of countless peoples adhere to this morbid fascination with comeuppance and consequence, 
using the pitfalls of these narrative heirlooms to teach their youth of the very real dangers of the world they inhabit. In a similar way, Mushishi seems like a storybook full of lessons for a world on the periphery of our own, and maybe that's why it feels significantly less sad than it should. These tales aren't for us, not really. We're not the intended audience to their stark lessons about things that carry you off in the middle of the night or infest the spaces between your house, of the darkness behind your eyelids, beneath your feet, or in the very hearts of men. The anime adaptation is, in my opinion, the perfect way to experience all the wonder Mushishi has to offer. Adapting that decade-long run over two seasons, themselves separated by nearly a decade between productions, this magnificent adaptation by Artland Studio faithfully preserves everything that made the original exceptional. Odishibara's 50 chapters neatly become 50 episodes, if you include the lengthier specials, with the production imbuing them with leisurely animation. Painfully leisurely animation. A haunting score, and offering our favourite characters a measured voice of their own. Artland's Mushishi boasts it all, losing none of the original's delicate soul. Every episode, any of which can be consumed out of order and utterly standalone, adds to the quiet legend of Ginko, a man who dispels Mushi even whilst his strange aura uncontrollably attracts them, and all the trouble they bring. Constantly moving so that this disorderly train never becomes an inconvenience to those around him, inconveniences that range from a mere nuisance to an outright epidemic, he never allows himself to settle for too long. This lends the series its signature pacing, with many episodes sending Ginkgo back to check up on his patients years later, and allowing us a glimpse at the lifelong effects Mushi and the Mushishi can inadvertently cause. This dilation of time is a curious thing, pulling us into the stories whilst distancing us from their leads allowing us to watch these events untethered by emotion. By showing the waxing and waning of a life long lived, the highs and lows and the highs that follow, we're able to detach from the melancholia that would otherwise threaten to swallow this show whole. After a particularly sad episode with an objectively cruel end, I was never left overly troubled, as I might be with a more grounded series, but instead they left me pensive Mushishi asks you to chew over its problems from a distance, to see it all as the chaos of nature and the cycle of life repeating ad infinitum. As Ginko revisits his successes and failures, we're reminded that one man can only ever do so much against the tide. That lack of allegiance is one of Mushishi's most refreshing qualities. Any notion of villainy is stripped from the Mushi by the show's curious writing. They are the way they are, it muses. And in a sort of trance, we nod and understand. That's what Mushishi ultimately strives for, understanding, and it achieves this through a carefully woven balance. For all the harm Mushi inflict on the world of humans, we see just as much pain flowing in reverse, with hapless villagers accidentally hurting a world they cannot perceive. This understanding is what allows Mushishi to sidestep the human horror of some of its setups. When a sad woman is lost to the sea, when an innocent girl has her eyesight taken by an unspeakable darkness, or when a mountain swallows a man, Mushishi remains calm, unsettling, perhaps, but never scary. Ginko understands the importance of watching. Despite his skills as a healer, he is often relegated to a professional bystander, and he teaches us well in the art of voyeurism. He catches the moments of beauty in a cripplingly sombre tale, or the buds of new life in the shadow of death. Over its lengthy run, we're told to observe and come to our own conclusions, 
And as an audience, it's a wonderfully freeing responsibility to be entrusted with. Because of this, Mushishi deserves to have you take your time with it. Binging it simply doesn't make sense, doesn't allow for you to ruminate on its multifaceted storytelling. Instead, I found an episode or two before bed worked wonders. With its transient stories, wistful palette, and softly spoken dialogue effortlessly guiding me towards the very real, yet endlessly ethereal boundary between waking life and sleep. It's a perfect palette cleanser in a medium full of shows vying loudly, colourfully, and violently for your attention. Whilst they may use bombastic action and cruel cliffhangers to demand you watch just one more episode, Mushishi is perfectly content to say goodnight. As always, thanks for watching. I asked a little while ago on various social platforms what shows you wanted to see covered by the channel, and Mushishi was comfortably declared the winner. So many of you recommended this show over the years, and I'm so pleased I finally got a chance to check it out. It really is something special. If you want to have your say in future community picks, make sure to subscribe on YouTube, follow me over on Twitter, or even pledge a buck on Patreon. If, instead, you're mad that no one recommended Ishizoku reviewers, hit the like button, and I'll consider hosting the next episode in a brothel full of succubi. <laughs>